Slinging the Biscuit, episode 23, intro song, Limp Biscuit, rolling, reusing it from episode one. Welcome to the first episode from uh, Europe and North America. Pat Shea portion of the podcast is located somewhere in Massachusetts. Somewhere. And then this portion is somewhere in the fields of Sweden, on the West Coast somewhere. I still don't know where. Technology. But that's okay. Crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> Over the big it's a beautiful pond. thing. Uh, a couple uh, quick housekeeping notes, as always, just wanted to... Uh, Address the Jimmy Hayes uh, passing. It's been about 10 days since we recorded. We recorded last week's episode well in advance because uh, my travel day. So, uh, Pat, you were actually, you said you were at the funeral the other day, right? Correct? Yes, that was yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. The wake. I was at the wake. It was a long, long line and a lot of uh, current and ex NHL players there. He seemed to uh, have left his mark in the. I don't know, the community, the hockey community, I guess. But, yeah, I didn't know him too too well. Just kind of in passing would say hello. My dad knew him pretty well, so that's, that's why I was attending. But, yeah, rest in peace. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think everyone that was uh, talking about him online had nothing but positive things to say about him. So, very, yeah. very cool Well, in that, but obviously not cool that he passed away. Yeah, not to get too sad, but, I mean, kind of got to suck, like, you got two kids. You got a wife at home. Like you pass away at thirty one. Like that's a, that's a that's a tough one. That's tough. Yeah, that's very shitty. They, and there they had like the slideshow playing and like videos of him with his kids and stuff. It was, yeah, it's definitely sad for sure. Yeah. So rest in peace. Um, pretty well. Man, that's a sad start. We got to pick up the pace here a little mm-hmm. bit, but. Uh, a uh, quick little update on the housekeeping notes. Since I got verified on Instagram, I can confirm zero results for uh, throwing all the burners in the DMs. Nobody has responded. Uh, nobody's really gotten back to me. Um, like, so apparently it doesn't matter if you're verified. With um, girls or with people trying to get on the pod? like The podcast, yeah. I uh, messaged Markstrom. I messaged Robin Leonard again. He keeps reading my messages and never replies. Uh, Demko. It, it's a tough look. If you look at I, our guest this week is laughing. If you look at the <laughs> conversation between me and Robin Leonard, it's just message after message after message from me. That is and tough. Just scene, 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 scene. <laughs> hey, you don't quit. You don't quit at halftime. So that's that's no. pretty. That's honorable right there. Listen, I'll tell you this right now. Okay, I've won a lot of radio contests in my time. Free tickets, <laughs> you know, free pizzas, free gift cards, and why? Because I'm relentless. I do not get off the line, and Hell we keep yeah. going. We keep going after halftime. That's so, right. Uh, you know, better days ahead. It doesn't work. It doesn't work with girls either. Like they don't really care about the check mark. Well, like people th- people say it does. Like if you slide in the DMs with the check mark, it helps out. It's if you have a big following, it might help. Like a six figure following, I guess you could say. I'll be dead honest. There's a couple of females that, that I've talked to over the past three, four, or five years who have all of a sudden creeped back into my DMs. They're like, oh, nice blue check mark. I didn't know you were, you know? Really? It's a true story. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe. Actually, you know what? As I'm saying it, I never, I when I got the check mark, I was midway into like a four year relationship. So I wasn't sliding in DMs anyways. So maybe I'm just talking I'm, out of my I'm ass. I'm not either. But the, <laughs> I'm not either, but the problem is you only have like two people in all of Winnipeg that are verified, me and uh, DJ. Yeah, talking so. out of my ass. Maybe it does help yeah. some people. Maybe I'm just not fucking cool enough yet. Oh, yeah. Trav. Well, Thank you for starting it that okay. way. Sorry, buddy. Anyways, carry on. Carry on to your housekeeping notes. Yes, we got a viewer of the week, Johnny. Uh, he wanted to message me this week and say that, hey, love the podcast. Just letting you know on our craft dinner talk from last week, I made craft dinner with hot dog water. Like he boiled hot dogs in like a pot. And then he used that water to make craft dinner because he didn't feel like putting in new water. So um, shout out to you, Johnny. I don't know if that was – he said it was a mistake. It sounds actually not a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're lazy late at night, 3 in the morning. Uh, also, yeah. somebody, uh, Robert Benotti said, can you talk about Henrik Lundqvist's retirement and his hair? You ever seen his uh, hair in person, Pat, or to our guest this week who we'll intro in a sec? I've never met Henrik Lundqvist, so No. You have you stalked him as well, Trav? You've yes, you know, I met him. I posted accidentally. A him. I did you person. accidentally run into him as well? <laughs> accidentally on purpose. Yeah. Dude, his hair yeah. is, is so much better in person oh, than on TV. Henrik. I'm telling you. <laughs> what a coincidence! Didn't expect to see you here in this elevator all alone with me. This is this just is so coincidence. incredibly coincidental. Who's the guy? Who did you follow in the bathroom? Was that uh, Enroth? <laughs> that was Enroth. <laughs> yeah, it was Joey. Oh God. 
Yeah, you're known for it, man. But his hair is luscious, his flow. Oh my god, it's so silky, dude. It looks so I I wanted to like ask if I could touch it, but like I didn't want to be a weird old boy. Feathered so. and lethal. Well that would have you should have asked him, man. I'm sure he wouldn't have cared. <laughs> hey man, I don't want a picture or an autograph. Can I just like touch your hair? Can I touch your hair? <laughs> that, would be, that would be something. You just walk up to him, like, don't say anything, be like, hey, Henrik, can I touch your hair? I'm sure he wouldn't think you're a creep at all. You seen the movie Blades of Glory, right? The the stalker guy for Jimmy Hector. McElroy. Yeah, that's exactly what I was picturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's like, <laughs> Jimmy, I just want to like take off your skin and like wear it to my birthday party coming up. Like I'm you. Yes. Like what a creep. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, that's our housekeeping notes. We got an exciting episode on the podcast today. We got a guest, first ever returning guest in the podcast. That's the first. It took us 21 weeks. Something. I mean, mostly because like nobody else wants to come back on, but. <laughs> One and done. He was our first guest yeah. too, wasn't he? Yes. Episode so now we'll just two, keep we'll just keep guest. going back to the same guests over and over again. Just keep checking. Yeah, in. we'll recycle. Yeah. And we're back. Shout out to Anchor. If you want to start a podcast, you know where to go. Yeah. Returning guest from episode two, uh, Kazmir Kaskasua. Welcome back to the programming. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't even realize that was the first one, and maybe I should have done what Leonard did. Just. <laughs> uh, not answer. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, Dale Weiss uh, does want to come on next uh, next month. He's also uh, oh, Dale's are uh, reoccurring so, as well. Yeah, I, I was talking to Dale the other day. He he's kind of in the same boat as me. He's like, "Fuck, Trav, I hate this place. I'm living at this place is a dump. You know, they didn't get me this. They didn't get me that. I'm like, huh, where, where is he? This at? is a reoccurring. He's somewhere. I think three hours uh, north of Stockholm. He's, he's a couple hours away. So from is he train. playing? He's playing again. He's playing in the Swedish League. Yeah, his wife and his kids, I believe, are still at home. So that might be kind of playing a little bit on him. But yeah, but it's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough. I, just out of curiosity, Casmir, you've been there. How long have you been in, in Sweden for? About three weeks, four weeks now. Yeah, I think I think three weeks now. Almost a month, I guess. Coming up here in a couple of days. Yeah. Do you do you feel like not having your kid and your wife uh, around, like not having family, is, is kind of playing a little bit uh, on you mentally? Kind of a uh, tough uh no no not yet i mean they uh i think they left about two weeks ago now and to be honest we've been pretty busy with uh we were on the road the first week and then um came back and you know then we had our first champions league games this weekend so it's been it's been pretty busy and now we go go on the road for champions league this next week so um it's been it's been pretty busy in that sense. And I think they're holding up pretty well back home in Nashville. So, um, yeah, it's hasn't been any issues so far. Yeah. So keep, so not having a lot of extra free time is kind of helping you out a bit in that sense. Yeah. It's been nice to kind of watch something else than Disney plus <laughs> at home. <laughs> so oh, kind of yeah. do my own stuff, get catch up on editing and all that kind of stuff since it's, uh, fun to be filming here. Yeah. It's nice to have some me time every now and then, eh? It's uh, two and a half years coming, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. Has it been nice filming, uh, like, with a team again? Because, like, summer, for, from since when I've started doing it, you just kind of get, like, views go down a little. You kind of get bored of filming yourself in the summer, and it's like, all right, I'm not really doing anything. Does it feel good to be back with, like, you, you can title it, you know, like, back with the pro hockey team, like, filming at the rink because like the story films itself pretty much you just follow your day as simple as possible yeah exactly like during the summer it's kind of pretty like i felt sometimes it's forced to yeah come up with something to film just to put up an episode but um yeah it's been it's been fun here and you know i've been waiting for you know i was excited to play hockey and then i also like when i signed i was excited to like come here and, and film as well and um yeah it's it's been been a lot of fun especially with the games i didn't even realize like how much of vlog time that, that is just one game and putting up the oh, yeah. and talking about the game so um yeah that's been that's been fun and just feeling like we talked last time i think just being comfortable with filming like um a little bit more comfortable like i think a lot of the guys already knew that some some youtubers coming so. <laughs> <laughs> um 
I'm still hiding the camera, but with some people, some guys who have come up to me and asked about it, then I kind of know, okay, like, they know about it, and it's been positive, like, everybody's just, like, excited to find out about it, I guess, and, like, right. why, and just, like, just curious about it, so, um, yeah, and obviously it's been, it's been taken off here in Sweden pretty well as well, so, um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been fun to document it as well, and, like I said, like, family's been gone for two weeks, and they kind of get to live my life that way as well, back home. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have that experience soon with a new team going in as a, as a YouTuber going into a new new team. So I'm going to be curious to see, like, who already knows or who's kind of like, what the... And there's such a stigma, I feel like, with the, like, YouTuber because of a lot of the famous ones being super, like... I don't even know what the word is. A lot of them are cringe, cringy, I guess, just being like super extra and just, there's a stigma there. So it'll be interesting. It's definitely giving me like, I'm very uncomfortable when I like even think about like coaches or staff, like <laughs> even knowing anything You're about right. YouTube. So, right. Um, yeah, that's definitely an obstacle that. I mean, once you've, I mean, you've been doing it for a long time and, but, um, yeah, hockey is hockey and, you know, new teams always, always a new team with that kind of stuff. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty uncomfortable. Speaking of YouTubers, uh, last night, did you guys catch the Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley boxing match? Well, it was early your time. It was last night for me. It was like 5 a.m. your time. Yeah, I Trav, just saw the result afterwards. Just the result. Trev, were you streaming illegally? Oh, dude. I So I, I texted Pat last night at around midnight. I was like, I'm going to be FaceTiming you at 2 a.m., okay? And I want to FaceTime you so I can get the stream because I'm having a very hard time finding somewhere in Sweden where I can I get the stream from. And Pat says, I'm going to be out and about with a lady friend. I'm like, Hold well, there on. was that opportunity. Hold on. You said, can, uh, can I FaceTime you? And I was like, yeah, if I'm home chilling, I'll FaceTime you. And then you texted me. And you said that you weren't staying up. Eh? Well, I decided to give up because it was going to be 4 a.m. Yeah, I figured you were going to be with your lady. I was like, the odds well, are against me here. So after you said that, then I was like, oh, I have no obligation to be anywhere watching. So then I, you know, made made moves. I executed executed the plan. <laughs> and, and I watched well, four, on the phone. 4 a.m. rolls around. I, I woke up because I still haven't gotten used to the time change. And I'm like, well, the fight's taking place in about 20 minutes. I might as well try to find a stream. So I'm going through YouTube. I'm trying to find a stream. I ended up finding an Instagram live stream to watch the full fight. It didn't wow. get banned. I watched the full fight on Instagram live stream. So I saved 60 bucks or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I watched the full fight. And Pat and I were texting after every round. Did you see that punch? <laughs> Did you see that? What would you think? Who won that one? So yeah, that was... We were both off on our predictions like that. My, my my initial prediction was that like Jake Paul would probably outbox him a little because Tyron's trigger shy, but I thought Tyron would catch him and and finish him. He did catch him, but didn't finish him. That was the highlight. He hit him hard once, and the, the ropes kept Jake up. I think Woodley, if Woodley was more just was more active he would have won like jake just threw more punches like well he wasn't even necessarily hitting him but it was just like he was throwing more punches and they're gonna look at activity so but yeah. nothing nothing you too know what as somebody tried. who's as somebody who's like not really knowledgeable when it comes to like ufc fighting and like uh, boxing and, and all that kind of stuff I, I noticed as the fight went on i thought it doesn't seem like he's uh, he's trying to wait for that perfect opportunity yeah. and i thought that like maybe i was crazy for thinking that because no. like why would you and then, like, Michael Bisping on, on his YouTube page and his Instagram, he was going off about how, you know, Woodley was just waiting around trying to find the perfect, you know, knockout. It's like, just hit him. You know, just work with yeah. that. And I was like, okay, so maybe I wasn't the only one seeing that. No, that's that's Woodley's biggest problem. Like, that's – every time he's lost, it's it's been that. Even in his wins, he's just trigger shy and waits and waits, waits, and then he'll throw this huge right hand. And when it's UFC or a four, four-ounce glove, he, he hits him and drops him. He can just jump on him. You know, it only takes the one. Because he'll just jump on him and finish him. Mm. Boxing, it's it's tough. It's tougher to just wait for that perfect punch when it's all you know, all it is. So yeah, that, that's a thing he does. It was pretty. It was pretty pissed. I think a lot of people were let down that he couldn't, <laughs> that he didn't finish him. But hey, whatever. The the 
the fucking, I don't even know the movie goes on the storyline goes on with Jake Paul he's gonna keep this boxing thing up until until someone can finish him but it's super entertaining I'm very invested in it do you gonna get the tattoo or no no I don't think he I don't think Jake's gonna rematch him either so I don't think he'll get the tattoo no really yeah. he seems pretty keen I, on getting that tattoo on a rematch yeah, because he wants the rematch because he knows he could have he, he could have won. Like Jake started getting tired. He of course he wants the rematch, but I don't think Jake will give it to him because why would he? Like he, so he gets the tattoo. He, well, he edged it out. Like Jake edged out the win, so now why would he? For his marketing purpose, like why would he do it? It's just a risk that it's not really willing to take. Like he already has it on his checks it off his bucket list. You know, W over Woodley. No. There's no reason for him to risk it again. Wasn't that one of the top pay-per-view events of all time? I don't know. They're, I, they'll, they'll release the numbers, I think, in the next couple of days. I, did you hear a number? They are saying that they did more, like significantly more numbers for this one being in Jake or Jake Paul's hometown of Cleveland than McGregor's fight that he had in Dublin, Ireland a couple of years ago. I can't remember who he was fighting, but like that's that's some big numbers if that mm-hmm. is true. I know Dana White's not a, a fan of the numbers. He thinks that he's pulling or they're pulling them out of their ass, but... Well, the, it's impressive, nonetheless. They weren't released yet, but the when McGregor fought, when did McGregor fight in Ireland, though? Probably one about three or four years ago. Well, let me see what fight that was. I think it was before his wife's first pregnancy when he when he took that big stint off. I believe it was in 2014. It was a okay. It was a UFC fight night. It was way before McGregor was who he is. Okay. So he wasn't that same like star power quite yet. So it's different. Speaking of star power, we got uh, we got a couple issues on hand. We're going to try to crack the nut here. And we're going to try to do something that's never been done before in the hockey community and on this podcast. We're going to solve a, t- a potential <laughs> issue. What do you think, Pat? How does that sound? I love it because we can squash, okay, gonna... squash the beef. Beef squash. We'll squash the beef. But first, we got to tell you about today's sponsor for the podcast, the folks at Manscaped Falls in the Air. Back to school season in the air. Guess what you don't want to be doing? Carving your pumpkin incorrectly carving your pumpkin <laughs> incorrectly no that would be a terrible terrible thing you don't want to start chopping with the knife next thing you know you put the eyes in the wrong area chop the one in the mouth it's it's then the seeds just start spraying everywhere out of the out of the pumpkin no you don't want to do that you want to get the manscaped lawn mower and have a nice gentle smooth carving of your pumpkins trav is pretty well known for a smooth pumpkin pumpkin carving aren't you trav yes i actually won a competition back in grade seven for my pumpkin carving abilities now granted my best days are behind me in that sense but let me tell you what's not behind me is a bad pumpkin carving on my crotch area it's because of the manscaped lawnmower 4.0 as always you need to go manscaped.com you use the promo code biscuit i made a mistake last week i didn't even catch it or the promo code is not biscuit 69 anymore because they don't want us using that it's biscuit b-i-z-k-i-t pick up a lawnmower pick up some awesome stuff and have your back to school in your pumpkin spice season, feeling fresh, feeling lighter, with a freshly shaved crotch, back, <laughs> ass, neck, whatever you got to shave. The best in the business. Get her done. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring the podcast. As always, you guys are great. Love you, Dom. Anyway, shall we get into the uh, main topic? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, for those that have been listening to the podcast for a couple weeks, a little bit of an <laughs> issue that, that I brought up personally. And this, this is my issue. This isn't Pat is, Pat's issue. And I want to start off by saying that this is just on a YouTube creative basis. This has nothing to do with Casmer being, you know, as a professional, we're, we're separating the two entities, right? As as a a professional, I respect the hell out of what he's doing. And and I admire any professional athlete out there because I, I, I have an understanding of like what's going on. So that's not the issue. The issue that I have personally is that it has come into my, my hands information that, you're charging for podcast appearances or, or different you know, appearances within the community. But the, the issue that, that I have the most about that is, and Pat and I were just talking about this before we, you know, we started up uh, the podcast for today, is that like Pat and I are, are broke, right? Like, like this, is what, this is what we do for money, right? And not to, to take away from the point, but like anytime somebody wants us to do an appearance like within the community or, or help out, it's like, well... You, you've allowed us to make a couple bucks so like we don't got to work at, at Whole Foods or, you know, work at, you know, the local beer store on the weekends. Like we can, you know, play hockey, 
make some videos, make a couple bucks and stay afloat. And we feel like, you know, we're, at least for me, I think Pat's on the same page, but like we're indebted to you as a member of the community. Thank you for supporting us. I'll hop on for an hour or two. I'll do whatever I can to help you out. But when it, like, you're making some good money, dog, like, like I, I would happily take a pay cut that you got, you know, for, you know, what you're doing with hockey. Um, like both, whether we're talking about in the American league and the SHL or in the NHL, like you're making some good coin, just the the idea of, you know, charging for a podcast appearance when I, I'd like to think that, you, that you're set for a while financially, it just doesn't sit right. Especially like when it's within the community, I was curious if you want to touch on that. Cause it, I have no idea what your side of the story is. This is I, I just see this in the community information comes to me and I kind of roll with it. And we kind of go from there. Yeah, I mean, um, there's, there's... And you can absolutely of, dish it back if you want to. <laughs> absolutely. There's a, there's a more to the appearance than just the hopping on the call. Um, what's on the... On the, uh, I guess, included of um, me hopping on, obviously... Uh, it's different too when when it's a it's a season and I'm at the rink all day and um, or I'm traveling and then coming home and you know trying to trying to tell the family that oh I get a, I'm disappearing for an hour or two like you said um, yeah and and to be honest like there's I wouldn't have time to do all the requests that i that i get obviously like doing youtube and all the stuff on social media i feel like um i'm one of the targets and i don't know maybe a lot of the other players too have a lot a lot of requests on their on their inboxes and emails but um yeah i just i just think it's a um Let me try to find a word here. <laughs> uh, I think I think I think what I'm hearing is that it's like if you want to give up your time away from your family or hockey, that you want it to be you know profitable. You're like, okay, I'm not going to waste my time here, or give my time unless I'm getting something in return. It's seemingly what I'm getting from what you're saying. Is that off or? Yeah, and then, and like I said, there's more more involved on in the on the deal than just me coming on and talking um mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah like it's a trade-off for our two of my time and you know putting into uh getting some new diapers and baby food <laughs> I, feel, so, I feel um yeah and like i said like i should like uh obviously i should um I don't want to leave anyone on red either. Um, uh -huh. And like, if anyone, if someone wants to like, that I come on, there's a way to, you know, get me on. Like, I'm not, not, not just like leaving it in the inbox, you know, but uh, like I said, there's been a lot and um, I don't want to feel obligated to do, to stretch myself during the season to go and do every single request that I get, you know? Um, so I think it's just, a fair, to me, it's just a fair way to like give an opportunity to, to get me on. And obviously, like I said, it, it's more than just, just hopping on and, and talking. There's, there's more benefits to it. Uh, but that's also always just, uh, talked with the, whatever platform and whatever show. And obviously it wouldn't be fair to those platforms that, have uh that i've had to deal with in the past to uh you know start doing so when it's like with a more established say like instagram platform that has a podcast there's it's almost like a sponsorship kind of deal is what you're saying like you would then i don't know do more like an appearance or something and do there's more to it than just going on the podcast rather than just like yeah, yeah i want to make it worth, for, worth their, their while for sure so that's like a, um, you know, like for them to like reserve my time and you know reserve my platforms, you know, and make a make an appearance out of it, you know. 
So are, are you thinking, and I think the word you're looking for more so is like uh, like justification. Like you want to justify the sacrifice of your time uh, for for like what, what you're doing. Like you have things on a day-to-day basis that like, like you said, they take time. Like you're, you're a professional athlete, what, eight, ten hours out of the day. You got a family, you got a wife, you got a kid, you got a life, you got all the other adulting stuff you got to take care of, and, and your time is valuable. Mm-hmm. The, the the one the one point that that somebody left a comment and Pat maybe you remember who it was and they made a very good point um, the other week was that the the reason why maybe you're doing it is to kind of separate like the you know the boys from the men shall we say right like if, like those high school kids that you were talking about last week Pat that have like three people mm-hmm. listening to their podcast and and it's all family members you know like those those are the ones that maybe you know stay clear of. If you're charging right. a price tag, the guys that are actually doing a you know a weekly podcast, whatever, maybe like us or, or even people that are actually big, um, they, they'd be willing to pay that price. And you, and you separate right out of the gate the the big dogs from the small dogs, shall we say? Would that be pretty accurate, or am I missing something there? Yeah, like uh, obviously anyone can, you, you know, like slide into someone's DMs and like, you know, yeah. Trap tra- slides. <laughs> yeah. Do a lot of it. Get an hour of someone's time. I'm trying to say this like mm-hmm. uh, like without coming off wrong. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, got you, I got you. Sounding like, like an idiot, but. Um, like your time's valuable. You're a busy guy and, and you want, yeah. you want someone for your time because time's hard to come by. Time's that one asset you for can't sure. buy more of. Yeah, you don't have. Accurate? You can't buy more time. If they want me, they there's a way they can get me. You know. I yeah. I think you, you're make you make a good point. I mean, like we, especially you. You know, you were in the highest level as an athlete, a pro athlete in the highest level. Super busy life. You have a family. You have kids, and then all of the video editing that you do, whatever. Super busy life. You know, for me, I don't have a family or whatever, but I relate to the busyness of doing videos you know like whether you're filming editing you're we're doing a podcast you know whatever we're doing there's a lot and it gets stressful and overwhelming so it's for me when i come across a lot of say like i don't get as probably not as many as you but i'm like seeing like a kid dm me like oh wanna hop on the podcast and i'll either just not like i'll not open it or if i'm having like a moment where i'm like hey i have a I have a minute, like I finish everything for the week. Like, yeah, I'll hop on your podcast, like whatever. And it's just kind of like when I find my fr- a free time, that's when I do it. So I do relate to that where it's like, I'm probably not going to acknowledge it unless I have that moment. Cause it's again, it's like, I'm not going to give up my time where I'm editing or doing something with my family. Maybe, you know, just to go on someone's podcast. It's kind of like in the moment I'm feeling, I'll hop on. Why not? But I, I don't, I don't think I, agree with the payment of like charging like a kid like that and maybe i don't know if you do for sure or not like with a kid and, and we don't have to agree on it pat if, if i could cut you off for just a quick second i i, I yeah. think well, what you're trying to say as well is that like you, you're not lining up like hey who wants to you know have me do a, an appearance yeah. i have all the free time in the world it's okay you caught me at the right time yeah. i finished everything i'm doing for the week i'm not skating i'm not working out i got a six hour window tonight where i'm just sitting around doing nothing you want my time i got nothing but time to give you for tonight yeah. like right at right time right opportunity kind of deal is that correct yeah and then if it, obviously if i've never had a big podcast ask me to go on and say like the biggest in the commu- hockey community would be like spin chiglet. It's like if they asked me, I'd make time for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's I guess depends on that. But we obviously don't have to agree. Like, I think you make good points of why you're saying like here, if I charge it, because I'm so busy with my life and job and family that it's a profitable for me to say, okay, let me take time away from that to do this. I understand the view. I mean, we don't have to agree on the payment part of it but do you like do you charge like say if like a group of i don't know 16 year olds which is seemingly common they'll slide in the dms and be like hey we're starting a podcast you don't know me and my friends about blah, blah 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 can you hop on like it's not you don't get anything out of that like going on it obviously do you say to them like hey you know x amount for my appearance same same boat yeah, I mean, all I know is like I'm not the only one doing it, and I think 
it's it's not just my my decision it comes from mm-hmm. like um my content um content like people and also agency and it's kind of like from there and um i i'm sure like you guys saw mm-hmm. someone barking on my comments and that's why you saw it and like <laughs> you know but i'm not like the only one doing it like you think Carrie Price is doing every podcast he's asked to do. So, like, uh, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, that, that was another. He doesn't question even reply we, to my uh, DMs. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> but that was another question we had, though, too, because we don't. We obviously know nothing about it. Like, is that a thing? Like that you say you're not the only one. Is that a thing that people like say in the NHL? Like, because obviously there's a status there. Is that a? And you guys all have agents and whatever an agency. Is that the trend that? For them, for you guys to go on a podcast, that they have to pay for the appearance. Oh, I'm sure it's different for everyone, everyone, but um, but definitely there's there is something like that going on for sure. And um, but like, I didn't, you guys didn't judge me anything for for this. No, like, no, uh, it's not like uh-huh. a every time thing. And like, obviously there's like like there's marketing aspect to it as well. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what these, what all the platforms and shows are that reach out to me. You know, I don't know if it's who's who's kid it is, like yeah, kids, yeah. or like you guys or adults or like someone put their kid to like ask me or like you know like, um, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a tricky situation, but I mean, um, like it all comes down to like I'm. I'm offering more than just the, just the, uh, just the, the chat. And then obviously I'm not leaving people on in the, in the inbox. So I'm willing to work with, with every show and, you know, make it work if that's how it is. And obviously make it worth, worth my time since, you know, got, got this hockey thing and, and the family as well. Yeah, I mean, when you say you're providing more, like, what what does that entail? So, like, say, you, yeah, you get the you know the 150 bucks, you get you on, do your hour, hour and a half, or whatever, whatever time, whatever requirements they may have. What's the what's the extra stuff? Out of curiosity. Well, it's like, it's like anything, like like for your collabs, you know, like, um, it's it, like a different thing for, you know, like different i mean like packages i guess like there can be like like you would know like social media stuff and like becomes marketing and all that all that kind of stuff so um you know obviously time is time is pretty important and taking an hour or two hours out of my day is um with the schedule that i have going on right now is pretty pretty big but um yeah like obviously like i said like i want to make it like worth worthwhile for anyone who wants you know wants me to come on and i'm always down to do stuff like that obviously and but but yeah i just i just figured uh someone was not happy about it and you guys saw saw it so but i'm I'm not the only one doing it but (laughs) yeah I, i will say i was telling pat about this last week when so to, to fill people in, I made a little Instagram story. I think it was about a week, week and a half ago and change or whatever. I was at a hockey shop, and I, and I saw one of your pro return sticks from Toronto uh, on sale or whatever. And it was on sale for 200 bucks. And, and I was talking to Pat, and I was thinking, I was like, you know what? If I post this and I don't tag him, I'll bet you I'll get a response. I'll we get him on the podcast. Did, did, I, did I or did I not say that to you, Pat? You did say that. <laughs> yeah, and look exactly what happened. Yeah. Someone <laughs> commented on my like YouTube video or something like you see what Trav's saying about you? I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I looked at the story and that's when I saw it. <laughs> and now I get it why you said 115. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to be very, very, very clear about one thing here. For for me, I'm, I'm not, I, I really hope it's not coming across like I'm trying to attack you or, you know, Pat's attacking you. For me, it was more so about like, just to like talk about this kind of stuff. Like we, we can agree, we can disagree. Like there's a lot of things in the world that people disagree on, but the fundamental basis of we all play hockey, we all love hockey, we're creating the community. Like, can we can we have a conversation about that? And the fact that you're even willing to, you know, DM me 
face the music and say, hey, you know what, I'll come on the podcast, let's talk about it. Yeah, we, we talked about a few specifics before, but the fact that, that you're willing to do that, I, I respect the shit out of that, man. And and I want to say thank you for, yeah. for you know, having the balls to have a conversation about this stuff, because most people wouldn't do that. Actually, I, I don't know of anybody that would want to do this. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean it's, like, it's... Like I said, like, it's... Um, and that was that was obviously during the during the season last year where we we're traveling every other day and um you know didn't get to see my family too much and then long days at the rink especially being in the taxi squad and every night being at the game so there's literally not much free time and then you know um couldn't really justify telling my <laughs> telling my wife that oh i got this two hours now and like she's stuck with the kid again for another two hours you know like um so i wanted to make something that you know makes it worthwhile for me and my family and obviously like to the brand new show or whatever podcast to to get me on you know like i feel like i found a that was like the the perfect middle ground middle ground on that and um it's too bad if some other some people have a have a problem with that, but I mean, like I said, like I just don't have enough hours in my in my days and sure. my weeks to uh, fulfill everyone's request. Yeah, I think it's sure. it's I think it's similar to like the way cameo is like the concept of cameo. Like we like Trav, you've spoken about cameo too, and how it's not ideal. Like, why would you make them? pay for like a little birthday shout out and then i then i kind of think of like why cameo is like these guys don't need money but they also don't have any time so it's like okay if i'm gonna give someone a birthday shout out how about they pay me ten dollars and i'll i'll do it or whatever like that's kind of the same concept yeah i'm actually glad that you brought up cameo because there's like you can look at some NFL guys who charge four or five hundred bucks for like and they can do a a 30 second cameo you know like uh you can't tell me think, that's like, you know. <laughs> no, it's common. It, I think it is common. A lot of now, like with cameo, there's a lot of like wealthy, wealthy, famous people on cameo doing it. Whether it's an athlete or just a celebrity, I think it's just a person. It becomes just a personal. Like, okay, do I think I should charge people for that, or like, do I even do it? It's either you get do it or you don't at all. I feel like in a way because how would you pick and choose as like, I don't know, their status of a famous person. How would you choose, pick and choose who you're giving a shout out to and not, you know, it comes, it becomes tricky at when you start getting to a certain level, I guess. Well, what I was going to add to my last, what I was talking about is that obviously now I'm here in Sweden, like by myself and who knows an off day, I might have a lot of time, but then again, Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm taking care of my body first. I'm ready to go for practices and games. I, I, uh, with the time difference, I'm on the same page with my family and then, um, do any other stuff that I need to do for myself. And, you know, like, like the YouTube stuff for whatever hobbies I need to give me balance in my, on my life. And, and then like, you know, if I have extra time, like who knows, like, yeah, I might want to hop on some podcasts, you know. So we were we were also talking too about what like um like obviously you have a salary with hockey where you made solid money. Is your like in a smaller form like Gronk as a big like the biggest example? Obviously makes tons of millions playing football, but hasn't touched his money yet. Like he spends all his sponsorship money during the year. And he's just spanking his his playing money. Like, is that also, like, with you doing YouTube, is that kind of a similar mindset that you have that you want to, you know, make as much with your YouTube so you can kind of bank the, and sponsors and so you can bank your playing money for later in life? I don't think people understand what COVID did for minor league players. Yeah. We, uh, so, I don't, like, I'm not there now, but, like, we didn't get paid for for a year and a half and then um obviously free agency like teams were saying like you know we don't have the money right now like we don't know what mm. what's going to happen and then 
when like I feel bad for the who got the guys who played in the AHL last year, the guys with families because they took like a half fifty percent pay cut too. They were forced to take it. So the guys, first of all, didn't get paid for a year and a half. Negotiated bad contracts because of COVID, and then got fifty percent taken out of that. So um, to be honest, like I'm glad I started YouTube because it 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 definitely helped helped us out during that time um and you know like it, it taxi squad guys and the guys in the ahl like <laughs> they're not millionaires like mm. a lot of people don't understand that like um so yeah like obviously all that extra stuff is like like i don't i can't work anywhere in the u.s like during during the pandemic like Right. I only have a finished passport and I'm like pretty my hands were tied like what I can do and so I was I was lucky enough that I had the YouTube going and um it definitely made a made a big difference on that um you know during that time. Oh yeah. yeah I, mean, I think dude, that they, they all hits home. Oh no sorry, go ahead, Pat, go ahead. I was I was saying I think that response there kind of would hit home for a lot of people. Because, like, it was definitely a weird, weird year. I mean, personally, me, I had to take the full year off. was going to have my first pro year and had to take it off. So I, I relate to that pay cut in an extreme uh, extent. But, but. Like, I was definitely, like, grateful to be playing hockey. Like, don't, don't yeah. get me wrong on there. And, like, you know, like, I would do it free if, like, if I could. But, obviously, there's right. life outside of at the rink. So, mm um yeah but yeah it wasn't it was it was a tough year for a lot of minor league families for sure and um yeah hopefully hopefully things are things are getting better and um you know we can we can play consistently and you know guys can get paid what they deserve would you agree with the point that um, and, and I'm really glad you, you brought up the, the COVID pay. I, I, I didn't want to bring up anything COVID related because I know we talked about it that like months ago. Um, but would you say that like COVID killing salaries and like like guys like like in, in your boat or your neck of the woods getting like a half cut or even guys like Pat where it's like you're not even going to get a contract. You can just sit at home because we don't have a team because we can't afford to operate for the season. Has it kind of made you um, reflect a little bit more on just like the... I don't want to say the shortness of your career, but like as a, as a professional athlete, we're like that is your primary thing. The, the shelf life is short. You never know what's going to happen, whether it be uh, the pandemic goes on, another pandemic happens, you get a career-ending injury, all these things can happen where, well, what do you do? You're, you're a hockey player. You're like, you, can't, like, you can't go to an accounting firm and be like, I want a job as an accountant. Well, all you've done is play pro hockey for the last 10 years. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Sorry. Like, is that the mindset? Yeah, it's like it's a job and like, that's my family's income you know Mm -hmm. like and that's (laughs) that's the only education i have is playing hockey too like obviously uh you know it's it's a privilege to be playing hockey and you know like like i said like it does it's not a job and very fortunate to be in my position but obviously like (laughs) yeah You have to live somewhere. You have to buy food, like all these things. Like you have to raise a family. Like uh, it all kind of play, kind of for sure plays a part to it. And obviously, like nobody in any job would want to leave money on the table. So, um, but like you're thinking more long term, like the like obviously like your career span is going to be short enough compared to like somebody who works 20, 30, 40 years at a certain place. Like that's not you're not going to be playing forty years of pro hockey unless you're. Gordie Howe or Chris Chelios, which are, you know, the outliers, obviously. But, like, you're thinking more, like, life after hockey. Would that be fair? Yeah, for sure. I feel like I don't know what life after hockey is going to bring. And obviously my goal is still on, still to go back and play in the NHL full time and, you know, enjoy that life and reach a lifelong goal and obviously get the benefits that that brings. Um so yeah i mean it's like even for my wife like she's had to right after college like she had to pack up her life and move to canada and like um you know it's been hockey has been 
Goldivar is kind of like, like I said, like main, main source of income. And, um, yeah, it, like it's our occupation, even though like we love doing it, it's a game, but it's still our occupation and job. I guess, but like Pat and I are in such different boats too. Cause like, we don't, obviously like we don't have a wife, we don't have, you know, a kid or, or anything kind of holding us down at this point in time, you know? Just, just us, <laughs> currently. <laughs> just us. us. And this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, I mean, the grind, the grind of life, man. Uh, I, I mean, I'm always looking for, like, trying to think of creative ways to bring more income in with, like, the YouTube. Like, I was even thinking about doing, uh, selling, like, workouts through, like, exclusive, like, giving access to, like, workout plans through exclusive content or something. Like, just looking for different ways to, like, get more income but also give back it's it's tricky it's tricky to tricky why, why to shouldn't, why shouldn't uh, hockey yeah. players be able to do that well that's what i'm saying you think, i was you, you think jake paul is not trying to hustle at all the time with different things jake Oof. no and he's <laughs> uh, uh no he does and he keeps well actually i i said i actually said that when we were talking prior to the podcast about that i was like well like Logan Paul and Jake Paul do exclusive content and still selling merch, even though they they have crazy, crazy amounts of money. And, and you know, they just they want more money for long term wealth, whatever their goals are, you know. But yeah, I mean, everyone everyone's looking for different ways to make money. I guess it's just part of part of life. This is my my time to and play hockey in my career, and obviously look out for my family's future as well. It's good. It's good motive. It's good. It's a good good reason. You gotta pay the bills. Have, you know? no. Somebody's gotta pay the bills, right? You know, groceries ain't paying for themselves and walking themselves into your fridge. Like, you gotta go and get them. You gotta buy them. You gotta bring them home. Yeah, tofu ain't free. Oh, okay. I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because that that was one thing I wanted to get into if we had the time. Okay. So, I I told Pat. Otherwise, uh, I'm I would charge you 150 bucks. Oh, man. There's the PayPal account, man. That request will be denied. <laughs> Slang in the biscuit at gmail.com. Zero funds. Denied request. Um, quick one for you, though. So I, I've been trying to do the whole plant-based thing. I'm, I'm on uh, day six of being full plant-based, with the exception of cheese. I'm sorry. You're gonna, that's like nails on a chalkboard for you. I'm sorry. But like, what, what do you eat on a daily basis that like really gets you excited about plant-based food because i'm basically living off like uh you know oatmeal uh tofu breakfast quesadillas you know veggie wraps uh stuff like that the last couple days like i don't know it's been like a year and a half now so it's just normal for me and to be honest like our chef here at in lexand has been unbelievable and like any any day we have lunch at the rink i'm like really looking forward to see what he's made and it's been it's been awesome. Like he cooks all kinds of different meats, like from scratch, like soy based or whatever. And all the sauces he makes vegan. So, um, yeah, obviously I'm trying to remember kind of the foods that my wife cooked now that she's gone and like remake those at home. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, I feel like I cook the same way as I did three, four years ago, but I just substitute the things like ground beef or like soy based you know like beyond ground beef and just switch out the cheese to the plant-based cheese and so nothing like nothing like rocket science and anything like that and um it was actually good like just dropped on my blog today um that i did get a blood test here in lexand and um i have no deficiencies on any vitamins or any minerals or anything like that so i get I get everything I need from my diet. So um, that was, I feel that way, but it was kind of just good to get the, get the numbers in too. You, you have a favorite dish that the chef makes plant-based for you? Oh, what did he, uh, he's made a couple like different kind of burritos. Like he had like a, almost like a pulled pork uh, fried burrito. <laughs> Sounds a little weird, but um that was unreal um and yeah like all the sauces he makes like different vegan sour cream and yeah it, it's it's been pretty good food for sure cool 
It's exciting stuff. What do you think about that, Pat? You want to try one of those? A little jackfruit burrito? I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I'm i not in the vegan, uh, vegetarian lifestyle currently. I don't know. I don't know if I ever will. I enjoy eating the shitty food too much. Maybe when I'm older. I can enjoy it now. And then I'll... Then hey, I'll I was in your shoes a week later. and a half ago. Yeah. I was in your shoes a week and a half ago. I'm not. I'm not feeling too bad. I'm kind of enjoying. Kind of enjoying. I, I feel like I'm sleeping better. I'll say that. Yeah. Man, yeah. People okay. say that so many benefits too. <laughs> uh, Pat, do you want to uh, cap us off a little uh, little spoiler for the vlog for you, uh, for yourself, and then we'll cap off the episode. Oh yeah. Well, for my subscribers listening, they're either this at the end of this week or it will be out next week. I'm doing. Uh, announcement video of where i'll be playing this upcoming season after having to take a year off um because of covid so it's been a long uh year weird year and a half it's been almost yeah a year and a half now so it's, and everyone keeps dming me like and commenting like hey you know where you're playing now so what's the deal you're gonna play in the nhl I, that's my favorite comment hey you can play in the nhl or what like yeah let me just make a call and hop in the NHL. And no, that's not how it works, guys. But I'll be announcing where I'm playing this upcoming season. So if you're a subscriber of mine, stay tuned. I'm going to tell it early on the podcast. Podcast exclusive, baby. Yeah, the podcast exclusive. I'll be in Worcester playing for the Railers this year. And that Let's is go. official as of two two days ago. So Wow. Starting Congrats, point. man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I got to start the vlog and get the in-season vlogs back up so. you got a title idea for that casmer we were talking before the podcast i was saying uh life in the cheddar is what you should call the series <laughs> it's the life pro hockey in the ched you can't steal mine mine's life in shl life in shl oh. i i rolled with the life of a college hockey player in uh in college that worked then i'll try a different a couple a few different see what works best we'll see I do got one idea for you. You should title it Pro Hockey in the Swiss. And then people will start, like, and you've got to geographically tag Switzerland. People will think you're playing there. And then say, no, it's actually the Swiss cheese in the cheddar. And then you can kind of get a couple different demographics, a couple different audiences. That's my idea for that one. That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's a sharp idea. <laughs> but we want to thank you for listening to the Sling on the Biscuit episode 23. We drop a new episode every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. If you're in Sweden, if you're in the Sweden area. 2 p.m. every uh, every Thursday. Casmer uh, Kaskasuil, thanks for hopping on. Pat Shea, thanks for uh, still being alive. Appreciate it. Congrats on the signing. And uh, outro song, Limp Biscuit, rolling. We'll see you next week.